All right, welcome everybody once again. Uh, hopefully the quality in this video is a little bit better. Um, I've discovered the output to 1080. So if you're having trouble um, seeing some of the code, I uh, apologize for that. Um, I can try increasing here a little bit. All right, here we go. So in our last video, we talked about our function where we are calling our system configuration and we're getting a configuration that I set up for this, um, this record with some default values that we are increasing the number um, of the default value or the latest value and we're putting it back to a string with the prefix and that's how we're getting our next number. So an original uh, function we were calling our actual record and finding that latest record by the created date. This way we are not relying on the data that's existing in records, but we are creating a system configuration which we can define and it will increase the number from there, independent from the records, okay? So if you create records, it's just gonna increase by one and it won't repeat and it will keep counting up, okay? And we are placing that on our data on before insert. So when we are inserting a new record, we're calling that function, we're getting a number, we are assigning it to our item number and we're returning the item and that's how we get our numbers. And just to do a quick test here, um, from our knowledge article, we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and uh, let's see, we're gonna refresh this page. So you like my bubble head? <laughs> bubble, 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 gubbies. So we got our knowledge article here. Let's see, we're gonna go to knowledge base. So we have our knowledge base here with our different knowledge. Oop. It still goes to the picture. All right, we gotta fix that. But here we can create an article. It opens up this light box with our article. We have our category, which um, we are gonna handle this in a future video, how to dynamically get values here, like suggestions. Then we have our knowledge base. So we got our two knowledge bases here. So this actually, yeah, I'm probably gonna put this blank because right now there's like a like a word there, so it, it kind of seems like they don't need to select anything. Then we have our draft state, which um, they're all gonna start at draft. So this probably we're gonna eliminate this. And then we have our audience. So this one actually is default for members, but private will be only visible for the user that creates it. Public will be available for everybody to see it. Members is only members logged in, okay? And then we have our title. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out here with a title. So how to code in Wix Fellow. How to create a function in Wix Fellow. Okay, um, basic struct, 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 structure of a Wix Velo um, back and web function. Okay, so. Um, when defining web functions that can be called from the front end, you now need to wrap them in a web function um they call this something else but 
So we'll leave it at that. And then I'm gonna put like sample code here. And we'll take this. So this is the web method, I mean, yeah. So I'm gonna put this first part here. Okay. Yeah, so this is kind of like web method. I meant method. Okay. So see, we can't even put like code in here. Like, look. Oh, and look. We even gonna put a screen. Oh, but no. Never mind. Cause this screenshot doesn't go nowhere. Do we even? This is not tied into anything. Okay. So we'll go ahead and save this. Boom. So when we save it, content has been submitted. It should go away. What happens? Hmm. All right. So it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> All right. So, and then we don't have any latest articles here. We don't have, okay. So these are published. So, so these are, are going to show published ones. All right. So that's basically it. So let's, let's take a look and see if I saved our record. So if we go into our knowledge, open our collection and something happened something was not right how to create what function okay so i did that but we didn't get the number what happened what happened all right so we gotta have to uh debug this and oh look i got my login let's see oh you don't have permission okay so actually the user does not have permission Am I signing in? I am signing in. Okay. So see, I'm, I'm signing in as me. All right. So now, so we don't have permission for this, for this other table, right? So our table here, um, so we got the sys configuration table. Okay. So if we go to our permissions, so it's, it's like admin only. Okay. So we're going to leave it like that. Okay. We don't need anybody else creating anything. So our admin only table does not work from the front end as the user. Okay. And the reason is that is we don't have the suppress authentication. Uh, let's see. So if I go here, I can do options. So let's do const options. And then this is kind of like uh, suppress, what is it? Uh, let's see, those things I always gotta look it up because I, I don't know exactly. Um, but I know where to find it. That's the important part, right? Knowing where to find stuff. So on our Wix dev site, so let's pull this out a little bit. Wix dev site, okay. On our Wix dev site, um, we can go to our Velo, okay. So there's oh look at all this wow, look at that graph. They even using graph now. So we want to do data, and they have something that's called options. Let's see. All right, so if we do um, because we're doing an update, right? So let's do update here, and. It talks about options, okay? And we have, okay, so Wix store stuff, consistent read, what is this? When true reads data from primary database instance, this decreases performance, but ensures data, okay. Fields, suppress auth, this is what we're talking about. And then we got suppress hooks, okay? We are using a hook, so we don't want you to do this. But see, if you got many hooks in place, like business rules, right? So this is like canceling all your business rules. So, but we do want to do this. Okay. And then this talks about it here. Do, 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 do. So this is a new updated. But this is what we need. Suppress off true. Okay. So we're going to create our option here. So let's go back to our code. We're gonna put this, so it's an object of options. And then our options, we pass it. Okay, we can pass it here. 
when we find it, right? So what was it talking about? We can't query, right? To update. Okay, so recipes collection. Hmm. Where's this coming from? So I don't have permission to update. So it's the update, the issue here. Let's see. This, I don't know where this is coming from. So th there is, um, we'll have to see where this is coming from. It's probably coming somewhere else, but updating is the issue. So, oh, we don't want that. We don't want to do it that way. You pass the options thing. So we're going to copy options and see our, our web method has this permission anyone, right? So now if you really want to secure this thing, then you can make it only admin can do it. But we want anyone to do this because this is coming from when we create the knowledge article and we're going to have people like creating these knowledge articles here. So here is the problem here. So we pass options here. Okay, so let's do options. Okay, so since this is up here in the top, oops, it's here in in the top. So our inner our inner see this is in this block scope here of try. So it can go up to options and it's gonna suppress authorization. True. So now if we publish this, so it did, oh, actually, so it did create the record in the knowledge. Okay, so now, so now it's one record behind, right? Because it, it let us create our knowledge. It didn't like abort uh, that creation. So it did create our, our article. So this is how we're gonna fix this, okay? We are going to manually we're gonna update it later, okay? We're gonna replace it with a number. So this should work now. But I'm gonna create a new article. Um, I'm going to refresh. I don't think I need to refresh, but we'll go ahead and refresh. So this is going to create a new article. How to. Data All right. This is something else. This is probably that other thing. Operation time limit exceeded. Okay. Fetching failed. Hmm. Let's not worry about that. That seems to be some other code running. But we're going to go ahead and create our record. Uh, so we're going to do how to um, create Uma key on a 10 mini. All right. Uh, for our next video, I'll probably have a microphone. So you don't hear so much of the typing, but um, details on creating Uma key for um, lyrics display on live stream. 
Okay, so this is, uh, as we are testing, I'm creating all of our titles and basic description of the knowledge articles we got to work on. So I'm definitely taking my time for that in the future. But Luma Key, basically, we can take out the black background and leave the letters to superimpose over our live stream as people are working with our multimedia um, display when we have our live events. So details on the process. All right, so we'll leave it like that. So we're gonna save it. Okay, all right, so this time it did go and we do have a number, all right, 1010. Great, so that was the number for our other record. So, so we got our latest value. All right, so, so that's working correctly. Great. Now, we was gonna fix our database. So we're gonna do a workaround to get our numbers back in sync. So if we go here, we're gonna do open collection and see 110 was given to this another number. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new one. Boom. We got our number here. Um, we can do two things. We can assign this last number here to, to our, this one, make it go down, or we can just apply it to this one. So it's up to you. Um, I'll just go ahead and apply it to this one. So that number only gets created once, okay? So this one's not gonna like repopulate with a new number. So we can just delete that. We're back in sync. Now the created date is not in sync. Well, everything else could be. Um, so a few uh, details we wanted to correct here. This one is done saying knowledge base. We're gonna blank this one out. No placeholder. Um, we're gonna show nothing so they can pick one. And then for our state here, um, I thought they had a read only thing, but they don't. So we're gonna, it's already has a default. So we'll leave it on draft. This one too, we won't have this one like required. So let's keep it with members. All right, so they gotta make selections here, okay? So this state, we can we can probably even like hide this because they're not gonna they're not gonna like change this to anything. So we'll handle this in a future video, state management. But what I really want to be able to accomplish on this video today is to get our user, okay, to get our alter. And we can do that a few different ways, but I think the easiest way is we get this Wix user. So um, let's see, how do we get Wix user? So I'm just gonna go ahead and do Wix user and see what we get. So I'm gonna go ahead and do const. So I'm gonna call this one author. So I'll or created by we can do a wait const alter await okay so actually I think it's um
All right, let's take a look at the latest. So it's called Wix members. Let's see what they suggest. Let's see, Wix members. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, our API go. So we got members front end. Okay, so let's see. So we got authentication, current member. Okay, so let's try that. So Wix users, I think it was the old way of doing it. So let's go and use our newest one. I said something there, but. All right, so I think this current member, current member. So current member get member. Do we got retrieve custom field keys? Get a list of your site custom field keys. All right, so yeah, you can define your own custom fields. That's how you get them. Um, we can probably do that in the future video also. So comment below what kind of things you like to see that we discover. Uh, one time I was, um, uh, there is like a live interaction, like a web hook. I think they call them or web socket web socket type of thing that you can like we're, we were trying to create a communication tool um but i was having difficulty kind of like finding the right fields to use and i think um the developers were, were working on that at the time so uh, i can review that again and see if we can get that going but I did get the, the messages going one way, but coming back was how would you display that? And to test it out was kind of hard. And um, yeah, but set custom field. All right, set custom field. So let's do current member here. Okay, get member. Okay, so they're doing this, and I am going to do something like that. So we can actually create like a function down here. So let's see, we got current member. It says get member with options. What were the options? Field sets. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Full returns all fields. Public returns ID and all fields on their profile with the field sets. Profile status, profile privacy status, profile activity status. Return as unknown. Okay. Details to full. Defaults to full. Okay. So we'll do full on these are the types. Created date, ID. Okay, so this member ID. All right. Update date, activity status, active, muted, unknown. Okay. Contact details, members. Oh, this is what we want. Okay. Contact details. You got their date of birth, birth date, company, address, custom fields, email array, list of email addresses, first name, job title, last name. Okay, so we want first name, last name, okay, 
we got contact ID. Okay, so see contact ID and member ID. Where you go? Member ID, which is ID, member ID, and contact ID. So a contact ID is, I guess, when it's a contact, like they're not a member yet, they're just a contact ID. Like you can add people as contacts. And then you have last login date, login email, email use by member to log into site, privacy status, profile, status, pending. Okay, this is if you approve them or not. Wow. So check all of this out. This is the full profile. Okay, full profile. So when we get the profile, um, I guess we're going to go to contact details. And then we're going to go to first and last name. Great. Okay. And then we need to options. Okay. Member options. Then member ID, member contact first. Okay. So this kind of has everything we need actually. So should we convert this to async? Because right now it's that dot. Okay, so if we create the if we create a function, I'm gonna create a function. Okay, so we're gonna do get. All right, so I'm gonna do like. So it's kind of similar to um, to our web functions here, right? So you got cons equals so I select the function, and then you got the thing, and then the con. Right? everything else so if we do the same this expression is not callable kernel has no call signatures okay this doesn't go in here actually anonymous function Tell me how to do this, dude. Because, all right, junior, my junior developer, convert to async. And of course, like, um, I could have done this one actually. Because, You're trying to do this fancy one over here. Okay, so I think yeah, this crazy thing right here. All right, so if we do get current member. All right. 
right, let's see if this works here. Let's get rid of this. All right, so these options, I'm not sure if we pass that. This should just um, console log when we load it. This is from the front end. So now I'm gonna refresh. Supposed to just call it with nothing. What are these options for? Okay, let's not do options because we'll, we'll just do a default. Because I think it was just waiting for the options. So that's if we don't want the full. Cause you got past field sets. See? Um, <clears throat> no, nothing. All right, let's see, author. Oh. It's not assignable to type of string, promise. Hmm. So this is still like behaving like a promise, huh?
Oh, okay, so maybe that was it. It was not. You had to do that one away to async await. Okay, and then this we gotta like. So we wrap that in there. So This is the wrong page, actually. That's why. <laughs> so if we go create article. Oh, look at that. Wow. Wow. I was in the wrong page. Wow. All right. So, created by Danny Maldonado. Yay. So now we are accessing our current user. So this, um, because we, we want to use our data set for the most part. Um, so this created by, we don't need it here, but we can go ahead and capture that. So get our get current member. Okay, so this code I'm gonna use it multiple times. So what I want to do is you know you put this in the header and you save it on the browser so you can get that current member. But it's so so tiny and it's part of the system already. I don't think it's a big deal to have it. Um, Cause otherwise you have to import it every time. You still gotta import the member thing front end. But since this is this single page, um, what we're going to do is we're going to because we, we can just put a name in there, not mean anything. The weird thing is that before I was pretty sure before you can make, um, oh, look, it's right here, members. So you got members, full data, you got badges, you got private member data, you got public data, which is their photo title and see look at this public data ministry members so see this is linking to this public data here huh? but if I try to do that again what happens If I try to do a reference, right? Because I don't see anything new here. Let me see. So let's see. We want to do a reference. 
But look, see, we don't have the member here. So these are your collection. See, I put M, nothing. So how was it that before, like on this collection, let's see, student. Okay, here we have, oh, look at this. Mother, <laughs> primary parent. So how was this done? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Don't let you do it again. <laughs> like, ah, you can't do this again. It's done somehow. Still works. Look at that. Not anymore. Public data. Or do you do it from here then? So oh, maybe maybe if you do it from here, cause what these? No, oh, but look at this. Cause none of these are connected. They're connected over there. Yeah, you see, you can't even add anything. See, you can't add fields to Wix app collections. But I was able to do it one time. <laughs> wow, that's crazy, yeah. So they changed the rule how they do that. So you can't do that anymore. So there's probably uh, some update that now no longer allowed to go to the members. So you gotta create your own or with code, right? So now it doesn't let you link there. That's interesting, right? So since that's no longer an option, it's grandfather in, no longer an option. So when we want to know who was the author, we do not know. We'll see if we if we do publish, then they're gonna start showing up in our in our collection here. So I'm just gonna publish all of these for now. And then they also need to be active. So can they be published in inactive? Hmm. And then you got something that's called like versioning version. So here we got members. So see, um, how do we apply this, you know? Okay. Um, But now, okay, these are like completely empty. But the goal is that we're gonna we're gonna actually use a lot of these records, and we're still in like in our development process. We're testing it out. So right now, we just want their name. So what I'm gonna do is. I'm going to create another field like this and we're just going to save the name and we're going to use that in our we're going to duplicate so 
this one was already like that. So this one, we're not going to connect it. Not connected. And we're going to like hide that one. Okay, so when we save it, it's gonna save it with the author's name, okay? And our author's name is the first and last name, okay? That's it. Um, the other thing we wanted to do, all right, let's just finish this for now. Let's make it complete. Oh, our attachment. We don't even have a, an attachment field here. So we're going to do, so we got image and we got gallery and we got multiple upload files that visitor upload to collection. So do we want, um, Image one, two, three. So we do attachments here. Okay. And then we're going to go here. And this is going to be our attachments. Okay, so because we're letting up to four screenshots. <laughs> All right. Let's see, you can't like put them in order or anything. So they need to be like pretty self explanatory. The other thing we can do is we can kind of like break it down, but then it's going to be more difficult for, for our people to kind of fill out completely. So, so I think this should work. Um, to at least gather that information, but it's not really structured that well. But maybe in version two with our content, um, it probably work a lot better. So before we call this one a day, we want to do, so we got this valid to, so this, we're, we're not even going to worry about this for now because that, that you need like rules for this too. You got your versions, which, um, what happened? There's no default here. So I don't know what happened with the defaults on these. Didn't get followed. So our view count. Hmm. So this also has to do with the current user. So <clears throat> probably a current user views the KB somehow. We count it. So if the person keeps coming back to it, is it gonna go one, two, three, four? Maybe count it once every so often. You can probably use the memory thing here. You got your outer body. Okay, we got our author. Which for the next one we save, it should have it. All right, this retired also. All 
and then we got our rating so the rating um that's like a function based on when they view it so so that that goes the rating average goes with um with the count and then we got our attachments okay so i think this is complete for now so we're just gonna go ahead and close this out for now all right so we're gonna test this out one more time so if we refresh our page um, we should see our articles now all right we see our top four articles maybe I can put a little button here to keep seeing the next ones all right and then we got our knowledge bases here I'm gonna create a new article so we still gotta also create this category field here they have to select one All right okay, so how to log in to planning center okay so this is going to be general knowledge So we use planning center. We use tons of different technologies. Um, let's see, services. So we can do this one. screenshot here okay, we're gonna blank that out and here's our planning center so I'm gonna save our screenshot Center login. Gonna upload our file here and save. Okay, so I'm created by Daniel. So we have that. So what happened with this article body, huh? What happened here? So this, um, all right, so this is like on the page, edit, okay? So we're gonna go here, we're gonna find our pages. And we got our edit knowledge item. 
Okay, and this is, okay, this is not connected. So it's probably because we changed this one earlier. Okay, now we can also, let's see, do we have an alter? No. So I'm gonna go ahead and add like a field here. Let's duplicate this. And this one we can, okay, so instead of use, we're gonna do alter. And then we do alter. Cause that's just a name, boom. Alter, okay. Simple enough. Then we're gonna make this one like smaller. Okay, cool. So we got our altar. So this is the edit. So this one's not connected again. So we're gonna do audience. Let's stay. Number of ratings connected. Value connects to. It's good to go through some of these and like rename all the IP values. <laughs> all right, this back button doesn't go anywhere neither. Let's put it back to the list. Okay, this is not connected. Right, so we're gonna do submit. All right. So I wonder. This is this is already editing, right? So this is after edit. All right. So see, this is these are documents. Um. So I guess this is image is not gonna work. What's a placeholder for a document? Hmm. Okay, so if we do multiple images, um, 
from the document thing. A repeater? Yeah, well, um, last time I had to do a repeater that repeated the gallery, and then we had to create buttons to perform these backend functions to delete. Yeah, and then we had to keep track of like a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, for images right now, it's kind of hard to, to So I don't know the search. Um, So you gotta link it directly to the thing. Huh? And you can't data set this. Okay, so that doesn't work. So we can't really connect directly to it. Hmm. Attachments can be connected to this element. Multi document. Let's see, multi. Alright, so we're going to have to change that for the attachments. For this multi document thing, let's see. So there's a file oh I mean I guess with code um so media source. So I'm, I'm trying to go the low code approach, right? But I guess from here, if we're gonna do code and we don't wanna do a gallery, cause the other thing you can do is you can do a gallery and at least you can display the gallery. So, so you got media gallery.
All right, so here's our empty gallery. Great. And we're going to connect it to our gallery. Okay, oops. from here. We're going to use the gallery one, so we need a new button for that. So let's just use this button here. It's basically the same. So we're going to let to four. Okay, and we'll connect this to the gallery. Boom. Now we are going to um, update our knowledge. And we're going to connect this to our gallery. Boom. So there it is, boom. You can hard it. You can't delete it. So let's see what settings we got here now. Okay, let's do a slideshow.
Okay, so you can you can actually add a button now. So I wonder what this lets you do. Maybe it'll let you delete it. Button actions in the Pro Gallery Settings tab. Okay. Okay, I think they have. Customize the look and functionality of your gallery expanded mode. Go to customize expanded mode. Oh, okay. see if the button shows so maybe the button we can then do some ah the button just just opens it okay button does nothing All right, so we wasted enough time there. So we got a pro gallery. Um, so to delete the images, just contact us. <laughs> Not much you can do about it. All right.
what we could do is we can rename it. This is usually what happens. I go through the rabbit hole of Wix, editing everything and this could be like maybe um Now we have to do So now it's no longer low code because this is not going to let me do anything like that. a good idea but it's, it involves well let's see what's gonna involve this is media oh look it's right here This media management is pretty detailed. So on file uploaded. Okay, so this is it. On file uploaded. Okay, so this one, upload API. So you got a file name. Upload my file, upload file contents. Yeah, this, this requires a whole video for itself, okay? And they change a lot of these things. But actually, there's a media gallery you want to, there's a gallery. Developer preview, wow, look at that. So see that, 
Pro Gallery. You got this list gallery, create gallery, create gallery item is what we want. Deprecated. They just did this, huh? Bulk delete gallery item. Hmm. Wow. So this does figuring stuff out. All right. I think we're gonna end this video here so we can upload images to our gallery to delete it that's another story <laughs> all right well we are going to go ahead and finish this video um if you guys um like to see more content like this give us a thumbs up give us a like a share and we will see you in our next video all right happy coding Keep learning and God bless you.